video, I'll be going over a two month well child check. That's going to include the physical exam that should be performed at this visit. We'll go over some developmental milestones that should be accomplished around this age. Review some questions that I usually like to go over with caregivers. And last but not least, we will be going over the immunizations that the CDC recommends your child get at the two month appointment. Welcome, I'm Liz. I'm a family nurse practitioner and here on YouTube I make videos every Tuesday on content topics such as this one and on Saturdays I have a vlog documenting my life in and out of work as an FNP. If that sounds fun, consider subscribing. I'd love to have you and head over to Instagram where I post lots of other fun tidbits like this throughout the week. All right, let's dive into this. We're going to start with the physical exam and I would like to introduce our baby model. This is Piper. She's my daughter. She's very conveniently two months old. You're so much bigger than when we did your newborn assessment, huh? Oh, she just woke up from a nap. She's happy. Should we give you a once over? What do you think? And then after we do our physical exam, we'll meet back up here and we'll go over some of the anticipatory guidance as well as questions I like to ask parents at the two month exam. Alrighty, so as I went over in my last video, when you're doing your physical exam, you will have the baby be down to usually just a diaper. Since this is the internet, I'm not gonna take my daughter's shirt off, so just pretend she is naked. That's how you would do your physical exam of a baby. So when your baby gets to the office, one of the first parts of the physical exam is they're going to check their length, head to the bottom of the heel. They're gonna check their head circumference and they're gonna check their weight. This should be documented at this age on the World Health Organization chart, not the CDC, and that's not until they're two. And fun fact, you can't collect a BMI until the baby is two because that's when you start to measure their height versus their length. So once we've gotten all of their measurements, hi sweet girl, we're going to plot them, make sure they're looking okay on their own individual growth curve. Next, we're going to come in and just assess the baby. We're gonna see how they look. We're gonna check their skin, see if they have any lesions. We're gonna look and see if they have any birthmarks. How have they progressed? For example, Piper has some areas of hyperpigmentation. This is actually already fading. She also has one on the nape of her neck. Those are things we just watch. We wanna make sure that things are growing, if they're growing, that they're growing appropriately. Um, there's nothing we need to worry about. No new lesions have appeared. And just assess for the general color and feel of the skin. So her skin is warm, it's dry, it looks to be the appropriate color for her race, all is well. Next thing we're gonna wanna check on little babe, we're gonna wanna sit her up just a wee bit because we're gonna take a peek at her noggin. So one of the things we're gonna wanna assess for is the back of her head round. We're also gonna wanna check her fontanelles. So her anterior fontanelle right here is still gonna be open. However, her posterior fontanelle is gonna to start to close. So hers is actually already closed. And the posterior fontanelle is gonna usually be closed by the time they are three months. So it's totally appropriate for hers to already be closed. While we're assessing the noggin, we're gonna to wanna to use our otoscope to assess for the red light reflex. Looking in each eye, looking for that red flash in the back of the eye, which is again, that screening for retinoblastoma. While I am checking out the eyes and the face, I usually like to ask mom and dad like, hey, does baby usually like follow your face? Um, we would expect that a two month old would have a social smile, which means they would smile at you when you kind of smile at them and that they would kind of track your face a little bit. Also, another thing we want them to be able to do is follow an object past midline. So that's if you hold an object over here and move it past the midline to here, does baby follow it? If they don't follow that object past the midline, that would be an indication for a referral. One more thing we're gonna check out on baby while we are looking at their head. So we're gonna check their ears. When you use the otoscope, you're gonna wanna pull up and backwards in children in order to better visualize that canal. Do that on both sides, up and backwards. Quick tip, if baby does seem to be getting annoyed by any of the exams you're trying to do, stop and do something else. You want to do the exams that are going to bother them the most at the end. That way you can kind of get a good look at babies. So for example, Piper really doesn't mind having her ears looked at too much, so it'd be totally fine to do that and move on with your assessment. But you don't wanna check their ears, have them screaming, and then go to feel their belly and be like, oh my gosh, it's super firm. It's really firm because they're screaming their brains out. Um, not actually firm because you're worried about something. So if any of your exams are causing the baby any distress, you absolutely still need to do them, but just hold them off until the end of the exam when they're already kind of annoyed. <laughs> good job, girly. All right, so now we've looked at their eyes, we've looked at her ears, we've kind of checked the shape of her head. Just wanna peek inside her mouth real quick, look in the back, make sure everything looks okay. Let's see if we can shine a little bit. Good job, light in the back there. And the last thing you were really gonna to wanna to look at with their head here is can they turn their head 
from side to side relatively easily. That's assessing for torticollis, which would be um, if they had their head and they really preferred it this way and they had a really hard time moving it the other way. And what you would do for that is uh, you can do stretches. Sometimes you need to go to PT. My older daughter actually had to go to physical therapy for that. But if they don't have any issue moving their head side to side, like Piper here, it's really easy to move her head side to side. Totally fine. That would be a sign that we're not too worried about torticollis. Now let's move down and check out that heart. So again, using the bell side of the stethoscope to assess our patient, and you would be doing this directly on their skin, listening for any murmurs. Two month olds are usually really easy to do an exam on because they're alert and they're usually pretty happy and they're not bothered by you yet. Also take the opportunity here to listen to their lungs. Okay, I usually like to flip them over a little, just get the back. Oh, you spitting up for us? Good. And then while you're here, move down to that belly and see what sounds the belly's making. You just want active bowel sounds. Good. Next on this belly, we're just gonna give a quick feel. We want soft, non-distended tummies. This could also be a good time to ask parents, how are the bowel movements going? Does it seem like they're constipated? Do they really seem to strain to void? Go over all of those questions. Moving down, we are going to assess once more for that hip dysplasia. So we're going to do the Barlow and Ortolani maneuver. The Barlow, if you remember, it starts with the legs out, bring them kind of together as you put a little bit of outward pressure down. And then the Ortolani, start with their knees bent 90 degrees. You're gonna have your fingers pulling, kind of pulling forward a little bit while you open up the legs. If you don't hear any clicks, then there's likely no indication of hip dysplasia. You'd also want to assess for femoral pulses at this point. Make sure that they have good blood flow going down to their legs, that the pulses are equal. And you want to assess just for general tone. So she doesn't look, so you kind of want to see this. Like if you pull them out, she's not too tight. You can loosen her up, you can wiggle her around, um, but she does have some strength. Like there is some resistance there. That's the happy medium you want. You, you don't want them to be super floppy, uh, but you also don't want them to be super duper tight. You also just want to check their extremities. Make sure um, that it looks like they're sending blood to their outermost part, their feet and their hands. She has some sock fuzz if it looks kind of dark there, that's why. And the last kind of thing you just want to look at is are their movements starting to become a little bit more symmetrical? They're still going to do that baby thing where they don't really know what to do with their arms and hands, but do both sides of their mod body make movements? And yes, you're moving all over the place and good. Okay, perfect. And that is the basic physical exam of a two month old. All right, so now that we've done the physical exam portion, we're gonna go over what I like to go over with mom and dad and some anticipatory guidance. Things you're gonna to wanna to ask mom and dad are, does baby have a social smile? You saw in the video that Piper was smiling kind of when I was smiling back at her. That's just what you're assessing for. Does baby kind of smile at you in a seemingly intentional way? The other thing babies should be starting to do at this age is show pleasure or displeasure with their voice. So do they coo at you? Do they make those cute little baby noises like hmm, meh? That's usually a sign that they're happy. They're just chatting at you. Another thing it's good to assess is are they starting to show displeasure with their voice? Do they cry when they're upset? Can you start to differentiate their cries because they're but they will start to develop different cries at this age. Just like I'm an annoyed cry, like meh, or like ha ah, ah, ha, like something is really actually wrong with me. And even like a hunger cry is usually even different than that. Asking them about the crying is usually a really good time to also go into the conversation of like, how are you coping? Is everything going okay? And that's an important thing to assess. You know, do the parents seem super overwhelmed? And you can ask if mom's been screened for postpartum depression. You can ask if dad's having any mental health concerns. All of that can be kind of discussed when you're talking about crying, because usually that's when people are like, oh my gosh, Good time to sneak that in there. Next, you're gonna to wanna to ask about head control. This also could be included in the physical exam. You're just gonna to wanna to make sure and look. Can baby hold their head steady without support? So yes, Piper's holding her head up steady. They, it doesn't mean they have to do it for like great periods of time, but are they able to do that? Has their neck gained some strength so they're not just all floppy noggin? Other developments they should be acquiring at this age are when you hold them like this, do they lift their head up? So when they're held on a flat surface, do they lift their head up? You can see Piper's kind of lifting her head up, arching it up to see what's going on in front of her. Encourage tummy time still at this point. The goal is usually three times a day, five to 10 minutes each time at least. You can certainly go more than that. And something I recommend here is start to put little objects in the child's view so they have something to look at and want to kind of turn their head and see all the other things while they're doing their tummy time. In terms of fine motor development, babies should start to be opening their hands. They still don't, can't really usually hold objects too well at this age, but you just wanna make sure that they are able to open their hand and close it again 
and that baby can bring their hands together sometimes. They don't have to do anything when they bring their hands together, but does baby ever put their hands together? And a lot of times when Piper does this, she just kind of literally puts them together like this and sits and chills and stares at you. Oh, you okay? Other things we're gonna wanna go over with parents real quick are the feeding situation. What's the baby eating? How often are they eating? Are they making enough poops and peas? Has anything changed socially? Is baby still in a safe environment that has electricity and running water? Are their parents worried about being able to provide food for themselves or the child? And again, how do mom and dad look? Do they look like they are just like haggard and super stressed or do they look like, okay, I'm starting to get the hang of this parenting thing. Ask them again if they have absolutely any questions. And throughout the whole appointment, it's kind of a good idea to just see how responsive are they to baby? You know, when baby's kind of fussing or doing things, do they respond or are they kind of just like totally neutral to the whole thing that would kind of be a red flag if they weren't super responsive to baby or do they seem like they're very attentive to baby and well connected to the infant in terms of anticipatory guidance that's just what you're telling the caregiver to watch out for in the next few months you're going to encourage to continue to do tummy time you want to make sure that baby is always riding in a car seat i usually still show parents a picture of a child safely put into a car seat to make sure they're aware of where the chest clip should go make sure they are rear facing review safe sleep with parents so this is baby is sleeping alone in a crib or a bassinet. I also start going over swaddling at this point. So baby may be swaddled until this point. Recommendation is when baby starts to show signs of wanting to roll over, stop swaddling or at least stop swaddling with the arms in because at that point, baby can't turn back over if they were to flip. Generally, babies are starting to take a few more baths in maybe a more of a typical bath environment at this point. So I always just remind parents, all baths are drowning hazards. Do not ever take your eyes off that sweet baby when you, they are in a bath. Review any other questions that parents may have. A lot of times they come in with a lot more at this appointment because it's been a whole month since they saw you last time. Go over all those questions with them and that pretty much wraps up this portion. Next, let's go over the vaccines that the CDC recommends infants get at their two month well child check. All right, so at the two month well child check, it's recommended that babies get a DTaP vaccine, which includes the diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis. Pertussis is the whooping cough, polio vaccine, hepatitis B, Hib vaccine, which a lot of people get confused about this and thinks it's the flu shot because it's Haemophilus influenzae. It is not the flu vaccine. Babies cannot get the flu shot until they are six months old. Hib is to prevent against a organism that can actually lead to meningitis confusing because it kind of sounds the same, but it's not. They'll also receive Prevnar, which is for pneumococcal infection, which can also lead to meningitis, which is an inflammation. If you don't know of the meninges of your brain, you really don't want that. And the last is the rotavirus, and that one is actually an oral vaccine. And typically at your office, some of these will be combined, so baby is not getting five different pokes. At ours, it was, I want to say three, and different offices will combine them in different ways, just depending on what type of vaccine combination they are using. If you want more information on those vaccines, I will leave this link to the CDC website giving you the schedule and all the information on that, as well as a resource I absolutely love that just gives a lot of great information about vaccines and helps you address some concerns you may have from parents in clinic. And I want you to just remember that going into this, there there's a huge culture of concern around vaccines. Going into it well educated about the facts um, is super important not, and approaching it in a non-judgmental way, also important. Remember, most of these parents are just really concerned for the safety of their child and fear is a powerful thing. So you wanna leave those parents feeling empowered with the information that you provide them. I will leave all those resources linked down below for you to use, you can print, you can use them in clinic, or then you can just peruse them yourself if you are interested. All right, I think that pretty much wraps up our two month well child appointment. You were a great volunteer. Hopefully this was helpful if you yourself are, either your kid is going to their two month well child or you are, you have one of these health assessments coming up in school. I do have a newborn assessment and video that I will leave linked at the end and down in the description below if you're interested in that with Miss Piper Girl. And I plan to kind of hopefully keep up with these as she gets a little bit older. And again, if you're new and the videos like this were helpful, consider subscribing. I have ones on all sorts of nursing and NP and all parenting and all the topics. I'd love to have you on my channel. What should our question of the day be? What's cuter, baby yawns, baby sneezes, or baby smiles? I think I might have to go with yawns. I love their yawns. They're like, ah, it's just adorable. What do you think? You'll have an opinion later. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching today. Hope you have a fabulous rest of your week and I'll see you next time. Bye. Say bye.